Hi, this is Pastor Steve and Cheryl and I are here today. We're just really excited that you're a part of this Life Group series, Hope Beyond All Circumstance. And it's been exciting for us to begin to hear some of your stories and testimonies of things that God is doing in your life, things that He's doing in your groups, ways that you're starting to connect with each other and even being able to go out and plan or get involved in some community service together. It's really a great program. We're really thankful for you being a part. And again, I just want to remind you and encourage you to leave a couple of chairs open every week and let's just keep praying, inviting, believing that other people are going to come inside our circle, enjoy this fellowship, this relationship that we have with each other, and even more importantly, that they would come to know the Lord. I love this series. I hope it's feeding your heart, that you're excited about the things that we're talking about and the interaction that's happening between you and the Lord as well. As we've taken a look at the book of Philippians, we've, we've really taken time to look at the Apostle Paul, his life, the incredible transformation that took place beyond all circumstance, beyond all, nothing that you could even expect the way that God has moved in his life. And then even the, the church at Philippi, how it began and how they continued to walk with Paul, help pray, lead the way for years, 11 years of an incredible relationship between Paul and the church at Philippi. And as we're starting our study today, we're going to pick up at uh, verse 27 and just look at 27 through 30 of chapter 1, a real call for the church to stand together and to really do everything that we can to bring blessing and honor unto Christ. So Cheryl, would you do us a favor? Would you uh, just read those few verses for us? Uh, chapter 1, verse 27 through 30. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had and now here that I still have. You know, as we take a look at these few verses today, there's a lot that's gonna come out of this. Um, as we've taken a look at the context behind the writing of the book of Philippians, the relationship, the experiences, even that city of Philippi, 10,000 people, uh, a, a military house, a place where a lot of retired Roman guards and, and soldiers were, the incredible influence of the government upon that region, trying to keep Greece, Macedonia, all under the check of the Roman government. We have the Apostle Paul in a Roman prison cell, and he's speaking to them about not losing heart. He's already said, as for me, to live is Christ, to die is gain. He said, I don't know if I'm going to live or die. I don't know exactly what God is going to do. But here he says, whatever happens, live a life worthy of the gospel. That's a great call for us today. We're in a political season. 2016, we're seeing all the heated debate going back and forth. And uh, it, it's always kind of a trying time to be in the midst of a presidential campaign, as well as you know all of our local, state, and other elections that are going on. We're in the midst of a time where our culture is really being challenged. There's a lot of conversation and, and things that are happening in the streets related to race relationships. There's just a, there's a lot going on. What's interesting is this could have fit right into the same picture that the Apostle Paul's talking about in the Church of Philippi. The relationships, the different cultures coming together. It's never been easy to stand on behalf of Christ in the midst of an ungodly culture, ungodly government, you know, situations that aren't necessarily built upon the same things as the church. And uh, Cheryl, as you take a look at this, what are some of the things that stand out when you think about living a life worthy of the gospel, regardless whether Paul says, you know, basically what he's saying is whether I live or whether I die, you do what you're supposed to do. Don't let anything knock you off course or off direction from who you should be. Right. Well, in this opening piece of scripture, he's talking about don't be frightened even when this happens to you. You know, unfortunately, even expect it. Just know it's going to come your way. But that one of the marks is uh, this place of unity, 
that our unity speaks something to people, that it's a mark, it's a sign even, that will show them that God is being glorified and that we are not getting knocked off course. And so I don't think we can underestimate the importance of walking in unity with one another, whether it be in our marriages, in our families, uh, in the workplace, in our church. I think we need to have a spirit of oneness and unity. And that means that... um, even several weeks ago when you were preaching on um, ethics and business, you know, you brought some things to the table for us to consider about how even when your enemy does things to you, you have an obligation of what of, to do what's right. And so I think when we walk in that, we proclaim Christ even without our words, but in our deeds, in our lives. And it is a it, it goes way beyond what we could ever imagine. You know, that's great. I, I think that, you know, what really just fits right in here in this conversation that we're talking about is that we can't wait for all the right environment, all the right circumstances, and then say, okay, now we're going to do this, or now we're going to serve the Lord, or now we'll do something great for God. All the the things are lined up because they're never going to get lined up like that. You know, our walk is a walk of faith. Our walk is hope beyond the circumstances, not because of the circumstances. And I think that's really the, the theme that is so important for us to lay our hearts to as we talk about this in the midst of our environment. You know, it's not based upon which direction the political winds go. It's not based upon what our culture is doing. It's built upon our relationship with God. And that really goes down even into the smaller areas and even maybe the more personal areas. And that is, you can't wait for your spouse to serve God. You have to serve God. You can't wait for your friends to serve God. You've got to serve God. Whatever happens, regardless, you know, whatsoever, you know, takes place, live a life worthy of the gospel. When you stop and think about what Paul is saying, it's huge because what he's saying is live your life in relationship to what God has done for you. Because of Christ, let's let's just connect the dots. What did he say just before this? For me to live as Christ, to die is even gain. I don't know if the Lord's going to take me to heaven or if I'm going to continue to be here in this prison cell or just exactly what he has for me. But I know this much as I'm living it's, it's for Christ. When I'm living, when I'm taking a breath, it has God's purpose. Remember, I may be in chains, but the gospel's not chained. Remember, I might be under, under the pressure of the government, but the government can't take my joy. 16 times in four chapters, regardless of the circumstance, this guy's heart is overflowing. And he's saying, I rejoice in the Lord. And I'll even say it again, rejoice, be strong. And what he's saying here is stand firm, stand together. Be like one man contending together for the faith. And that is so important. The power of standing together, just like you said. You know, when we're talking about young people, uh, why is it important to make sure your kids are being raised in a children's ministry that really teaches the Word of God? Does it make any difference that your kids are, are involved in a student ministry? I just want to encourage you at every level, realize sowing and reaping is right in the heart of what we're talking about. Whatsoever man sows, and by the measure you use, it's going to come back to you. So we need in this environment, we're in a culture today that is spiraling out of control. What if we do? What if we, what if we live just like our culture? What if we live with the same, uh, you know, this postmodern rationalism where we decide right and wrong as it affects us? The Apostle Paul is standing in total contrast to that. And what he's saying is no matter what kind of decisions other people are making, no matter who is choosing to live this immoral lifestyle, no matter what the government may be pressuring you with or imposing upon you, it doesn't matter. You just stay on course. Mm -hmm. You just keep worshiping God, keep praising God, keep doing the things you've been doing, Philippian Mm -hmm. Church, because you have been amazing. Mm -hmm. You You have stood in the gap for other people. You've given beyond what you could even give. That's what he said about him in 2 Corinthians 8 even out of their extreme poverty, well, up great generosity. And he challenges even the rest of us, even to this very day, follow the pattern of this Philippian church. You know, stand and contend for the faith. Stand and live worthy of the gospel. So the gospel is the message of Jesus. It's the message of redemption. It's the message of grace. It's the message of forgiveness. How how do you see that, Cheryl? How should our, our church family be putting this into action. Well, I I was just thinking about it as you were talking there about how the Lord not only will 
um, give us things of how, how to walk out in the spirit, but he also gives us practical tools. And even in light of this scripture here where it says that, um, for it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. So we shouldn't be surprised when we have these moments where we suffer, where we feel the anxiety, where we feel... Um, you know, the, the attack, uh, you know, even, you know, when you feel the pressure on your family as because you're serving Christ. And you and I were talking even earlier today about Isaiah 61, about how he'll give us a garment of praise in exchange for a spirit of heaviness. And so there are some practical things that we can do when we see this uh, opposition coming, you know, shift into the gear of praise, shift into the gear of the practical things and your spirit then becomes uh, uh, in submission to that. It walks you know, that discipline that you need need to walk out those places and then where he says here um not you know you're going to have it and why because i had it too we're all in this thing together yeah. nobody gets through it without feeling the pressure points it's why it's so important for you to be here it's so important for you to be a part of this life group and as we have three more weeks to go i want to just encourage you to continue to pray continue to invite people to come and be a part because we're not meant to live alone we're not meant to to just out and journey by ourselves. The Bible talks here, uh, the Apostle Paul is saying, stand firm, mm -hmm. stand firm and be unified. Stand like one man continuing for the faith. And it, that just really speaks to us about not only the power of unity, but the importance of not being alone, the importance of being together. One of the big tools the devil always uses is to try and take a sheep, get him away from the flock so he can uh, take him down. The same thing happens with us as, as human beings. We get isolated, we get alone, we have a lot of negative self-talk. There's a lot of things that just begin to spiral out. The power of unity is amazing. The power of standing together in faith, in prayer, in service, you know, it, it builds our lives. We become deeper, stronger, more confident in the Lord, and greater things can happen. I wanna come back to this last verse, chapter uh, one, verse 30. It says, um, well, let me go to 29 and 30. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ Jesus, not only to believe on him, but also, like Cheryl's been saying, to suffer for him. Verse 30 is really significant. Since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. That, that may seem a little veiled to us, but in the context of this letter, this personal letter to a church that he loves so much, what he's saying is, you know that I'm under the pressure of the Roman emperor. I'm under the pressure of the one who demands emperor worship. And, and he says that I need to be addressed. The emperor said they needed to call him the word either, the title either Lord or Savior. And the apostle Paul is, is just speaking to this church and he says, you know what, you're in the same struggle. You may not be in the same cell, you may not have the same shackles, but you're in the same journey. You're in the same struggle. And that is to do what? To stand strong regardless of the circumstances, build our lives, build our families, influence the kingdom, or I should say influence the culture on behalf of the kingdom and not pull back, not be knocked off course, but understand that opposition is as much a part of a move of God as the signs, the healings, the miracles, the wonders of God. We have to understand, you know, when we're serving God, it doesn't just mean everything goes our way. It doesn't mean that the skies just part and it's nothing but blue skies. You know, sometimes God's deepest and most important work is happening in us through difficult challenges. And again, today, wherever you are, whether you're going through it or whether you see somebody else who's going through it, we should have a spirit of oneness and unity together. We should love each other, we should care about each other, and we should uphold each other. And through that, our deeper, closer relationships should be Christ-centered. The deepest and most intimate counsel that you get in your life should be Christ-centered. And, and that's the difference. The world is always going to be the world. There's always going to be a, an outside um, a perimeter of where our lives get lived, but on the inside, it's about Christ, it's about faith, it's about unity, and it's ultimately about building God's work, building the church, taking ground, standing firm, pressing forward, and believing God for great things. And here at Eastridge, we need you to be a part. We've got some incredible things we're praying about. We're planting a church in Addis, 
Our, our campus in West Seattle is in the embryonic stages of two services. The Lord has even other campuses in the Northwest region. He's going to have us plant. Some of you might be a church planter with us. You might be the next worship leader, another board member, or you could just be a person whose prayers and intercession brings the breakthroughs. Whatever role God has for you, we are one body moving together in one spirit, contending for the dreams that God has for us. And we're really glad that you're here and really glad that you're a part of this. Cheryl, do you want to say anything as we come to a close today about this whole idea of Paul saying, I don't have one struggle and you have some different one. We're, we're all contending against culture, against negative influences, but God is real. Yeah, I, I would just say even that, um, like for us, it's not, the, it's not the things that are big that you can see coming. It's the unexpected things that kind of take you out at the knees sometimes. You know, even we were just commenting on... Uh, Earlier yesterday, I was with a gal, we were praying, and she was asking about some different things, and I was giving her just this, this glorious praise, how everything was great, and within an hour, after a few phone calls, it was just like, whoa, the dominoes landed, and, you know, we just had to rally around and keep everybody on track, and it, it's just a con, you have, to, it's like Nehemiah, you have to stay on the wall, you cannot let your guard down, and I, I really appreciate what this word is talking about here, not only about unity, but how do you stay in unity? By walking in a spirit of humility considering someone else better than yourself or, or, or that you would always serve someone else. It's not always about what you want and how you want it and that everything is up to your expectations, but how can we together, it's that word together, how can we together walk in a place of unity? And it's humility is the key. Yeah. If we're not carrying that spirit of humility, we'll never get there. You know, Paul's just talking so powerful here about, um, and it's so important for us to know the context. You think about American culture, and it's becoming more and more difficult for people of faith because there's so much that we don't agree with that is so prominent. It's out there in front of us every day. And you got to remember the story of behind the scenes of the, the church at Philippi. In this town of 10,000 people, a major traffic route, uh, an influencer area, and how it was inundated with retired Roman soldiers who are totally loyal to the emperor. And they're loyal to him because they get their retirement. They don't have to pay taxes. They have special favor. And, and the, it's the emperor that says, all these people ought to be bowing to me and saying, I am the Lord and I am the Savior. And here the church is preaching something so totally contrary to that. We don't bow to any man. We don't bow to any government. But our allegiance, our faith is to Jesus. And, you know, the apostle Paul says here, don't be frightened away because people oppose you. Don't be frightened away because of the culture that you live in. You serve the kingdom of God and God will take care of you. Whether, whether I come or whether I can't, you just live a life worthy of the gospel. That's good. It's a great challenge for every single one of us. I wanna uh, just encourage you. Would, you. would you pray for us as leaders? Would you pray for the rest of our team? Would you pray over the life of our church? It is a great season. So many amazing things are happening. And I just want to challenge you to be a part of it. Push the church forward by your faith, by your prayer, by your giving, and your service unto God. And our facilitator is going to come in just a moment. Let's unfold our stories. Share your stories with those that are around you today. And let's build each other up. Let's, let's talk about some of the ways that we get challenged in the midst of our day, our culture. But let's keep our eyes on Jesus, and let's keep opening up the door, setting the table, pulling out a chair so one more person can come and know hope beyond.